Welcome to the ninth Sittermore and Kemsley Light Railway podcast. I'm Paul Best, the Railway's press officer and the host of this podcast. This is the first part of five programmes, all going well, that will make the complete podcast. We will start at Sittermore Viaduct Station, have a quick look round there, and then visit the ticket office and board the train for the journey to Kemsley Down. During the journey, we will look at the first half of the season, and we'll do the second half on the way back. Our gate is behind Pizza Hut. This bit of road is called The Wall and once boasted housing and a pub. Now we have a car wash and some retail units as neighbours. Turning through our gate, you can't miss the new communications tower. The station is located at the top of the stairs. Here we have the ticket office and the path leading to the platform. Behind the ticket office is the site of the former Sittermore paper mill, the majority of which was demolished in 2011 and is now being replaced by a large Morrison supermarket. The water tower was the last major structure to be demolished and that was blown up in early September 2012. The wagons in the sidings are trapped because the metal thieves stole the point plate and check rails, rendering the points unusable. In due course we plan to replace these components and take the wagons back to Kemsley Down. Back in paper making days, this site used to be the transfer sidings, where the smaller engines would bring wagons from the mill, or wharf, for marshalling into longer trains that the bigger locos would take over the viaduct and onto Kemsley Paper Mill and Rhythm Dock. The sleeper built platform stands on the third of three lines that were once here. The platform track and run round loop being more or less in their original positions. When a train arrives from Kemsley down, the engine is uncoupled from the train and shunted forward to the buffer stop at the end of the line. It is then routed via the run round loop to the viaduct where the points are changed to allow the engine to run back onto the train. A connection to the wharf used to run down the slope adjacent to our site. Sitterborn engine shed used to be down there too. All that remains there now are rusty rails and concrete on the wharf. Neither of the buildings could be locked up because the doors were too badly damaged from repeated break-ins over the years. So everything we need to run the railway at this station arrives on the first train. This station was closed on the 26th of December 2008, but finally reopened on Sunday the 27th of May 2012. Here's Leader breaking the banner to commemorate the railway being back in town, and also Leader's return to service since the early 1980s. Ticket office. We've had a great first year back at Sittermore Viaduct, so ticket sales have been strong. Santa specials have also been good after a slow start. This is mostly because we haven't been able to run the Santa specials since 2008, so we are rebuilding the customer base. We've had a lot of compliments about these trains, particularly because the small passenger numbers enables more time with Santa and promotes a relaxed atmosphere. It's such a busy time of the year. But more on this on the return trip.
here's the train, so let's board it for the journey to Kemsey Down. During the journey, I thought we'd look at the 2012 season, or more specifically from the opening until either the engine weekend. On the way back, we'll look at September to December. The season was set to start on Good Friday, but due to the last minute setback was delayed until the last weekend of May, causing the cancellation of Jack the Station Cat and Edward Bear weekend. Usually this is a bank holiday weekend, but as it was the Queen's Diamond Jubilee year, the bank holiday was held a week later. As you saw earlier, Leader broke through a banner that indicated that we are back in town for the first time since December 26, 2008. Returning to Cinema Viaduct was a great relief, as we could now get back to business as usual. During the Jubilee weekend, we held a Jubilee lunch, and on the Bank Holiday Monday, I attended the Friends of Milton Creek Country Park Big Lunch Community event with the sales stand, and I was taken aback by the number of supporters we have in the local community. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, preparations for steam and beer in July were well underway the glass design and viaduct banner were rushed through the printers, the beers and ciders ordered, the marquee and bar erected for the big event. The next challenge was to have Melia ready for the event. Her boiler had been removed and sent to Chatham Steam for retubing and recertification. This came back a few weeks before Steam and Beer and our dedicated locomotive engineering team worked long hours to get the loco ready for the weekend. Melia was finally released into traffic a day or two before the event. The weather over the weekend was variable, with heavy downpours and bright spells being a feature on the Sunday. Unfortunately, passenger numbers were down, probably because of the weather and not knowing if we would be open in time. But those who did attend spent and drank well, and we made a good profit. Festival goers were treated to live music on the Saturday. Face painting and Captain Jack Sparrow lookalike entertained everyone on the Sunday. Next up was August. This is our busiest month of the year. We run a four train service on Wednesdays and a six train service on Sundays throughout the month. Either the engine visits the railway for the bank holiday weekend, so we run an extra six trains on the bank holiday Monday too. Thanks to frequent mentions on SFM, the newly broadcasting community radio station for Sittingbourne, passenger numbers on Wednesdays were some of the best this year. We've traditionally opened on Wednesdays as this allows families to visit midweek during the school holidays, being a cheap afternoon out of the house. Ivor the Engine Weekend was a great event, with passengers being able to ride behind Ivor at Kemsley Down. Special mention and thanks must go to those who prepared Ivor for its visit. Bob Newcomb, the Railways Managing Director for his storytelling, and Peter Spratling who drives Ivor whenever he visits and of course Small Films Limited and Peter Furman who allowed Ivor to visit. Peter Furman is one of the co-creators of Ivor the Engine and visited the railway in 2008. He was delighted to see our interpretation of the Little Welsh Engine.
All change, please. All change. As you may know, we have a special visitor at Kemsley today. Ivor the engine is standing in the other platform, and Ivor has come all the way from the top left-hand corner of Wales to visit us today. He comes from the Merioneth and Llanticilly Rail Traction Company. Now, Ivor will be giving rides in his coach during the afternoon, and one of these rides will depart in just a few minutes so that we can fit it in before the next train goes back to Sittingbourne. The next train to Sittingbourne will be at 2.35, and there are other departures at 3.35, and 4.45 this afternoon. So you have plenty of time to have a look round. The children can fill in their treasure hunt forms. And to give you a gentle hint, if you look on the big station name board on the platform, one of the characters is there, and you just need to find the other 14. Our refreshment room, our shop, and our museums are open. And if you walk around the museum walk and look around our wildlife area and various other parts of the site, you'll find the things that you're looking for in the treasure hunt. Now, if you stand away from the edge of the platform, people are just loading onto Ivor's coach and it will then go for a little ride down the line. But it won't have to be too long, because the main train to Sittingbourne will have to leave at 2.35. If you look on top of Ivor's boiler, you'll see Idris the Dragon is sat there. Now, Idris has come out to see you today. Normally, he lives in Ivor's firebox to keep warm. But we know that if we have any problems with the oven in our refreshment room cafe, we can rely on Idris to heat things up, just as he did with the fish and chips and Mrs. Thomas's. Ladies and gentlemen, and Ivor is just off for a quick trip. At least that's what I thought was going to happen. Now, Ivor, come on, you know you have to leave when you're told, and that's, otherwise it's against regulation. On our return trip, we will look at September to December, but we're getting close to Kemsley Down now. Do 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 do